planning board day and the building inspector I think he said it was from May 1st to October 31st that we could camp there yeah but everything has to be removed afterwards okay. nothing can be left there which we always did anyway. so you're aware of all the uh, things that you have to uh, you're gonna have to have a, uh, a letter uh, that you give to the town uh, if there's an emergency or something that gives the town permission to pull your camper you know, if the river started overflowing or something. Okay, I didn't know, realize yeah. that because we, we, we used to have a place up in Hat, Hadley, Hatfield, Hatfield. Yeah. and we thought it was deeded to us and everything involved it, but it wasn't. So we knew how the wetlands were and everything else. And yeah, when the river came up high, we always had to pull our campers out and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And then uh, uh, you'll have to go to the uh, Board of Health for a... Uh, I did that Tuesday. You did? You're yes, and set. that's when they told me that the people who they recommend because of permits for the porta potty. Yeah. And uh, you'll have to give us, uh, or uh, the building inspector, a receipt of uh, the contract or bill for the porta potty. Okay. Yeah, but he didn't tell me that, but that's cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because uh, we've talked to two of them, I think, now, and both of them want to uh, say that they'll stop and clean it once a week. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not going to be a lot of people there anyway, but, yeah. you know, I'd rather have it clean. <laughs> yeah. And is there anything else that we need to cover on that? Or? Um, I think the only other thing, I, I'm, um, just as a, well, I'll do it for all the hearings tonight, but also that, um, about the notice, oh, yeah. the notice issue that, uh, yeah, okay, uh, there was a glitch in the advertising of all our meetings tonight, and uh, it didn't get posted in the newspaper the second week, so any action that we take here, uh, we can have the discussion, uh, and, but the actual decision uh, will have to be at our May 9th uh, meeting, so, uh, but uh, we are in compliance with the open meeting laws, but we're not in compliance with the zoning uh, uh, code as far as only because of that glitch at the hearing. So uh, you don't have to come back if you don't want to, but uh, that's, I just have to make that known to you. Right? Is it okay if we still go in there and start clearing up some of the brushes? So I know we can't take down trees and stuff or the wetlands and all that. But we want to be able to clear it up a little bit for all the, the brush and dead branches and trash that's down well, there. To clear it up, I mean, that's not going to be a problem, but, yeah. Um, so, I mean, it's just a technicality. We're, yeah. not, we're not going to change our vote. We're going to tell you at the end of this what our what our decision will be. It's just we'll, we're going to need to reconvene to do an official vote after the... Yeah. It's a specific, like, as John said, the, it's the, open, the open meeting law was satisfied, but there's a specific uh, statute about zoning boards of how we're supposed to notice our hearings that was a mistake at the newspaper, so it didn't get published. So we'll just, we're just gonna have to come in here and, and open the meeting and do a vote, but uh, so it's just a technicality. Sounds good to us. I could swing by on the night just to make sure everything went cool, but yeah. I don't yeah. feel it'd be a problem because, yeah. of, you know. It's up to you, yeah, it's up to you, yeah. Motion? Yeah, so uh, make a motion that we grant the uh, special permit uh, subject to the the, the conditions that John mentioned of um, the letter to the town and the, the permissions from the town. Second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 
I mean, all set, but it'll have to be confirmed at our. I'll stop by the night just to make sure it's confirmed. So okay. We'll get everything. All right. Going. We won't put no campers in here until after the night. <laughs> okay. <laughs> very good. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good night. Yeah. Uh, I, I think Tim says he was going to schedule all these. Oh, yeah, I think it, it just clicked down floor. Oh, I thought he, he didn't. No, he didn't like sand or nothing. Oh. I think he might have leveled what was there, but then it was just uh, like my click down. Wait, when his floor is bad enough? They were old, so I don't think he, you know, I don't think he had enough uh, oh, to finish, to refinish them, so he just went over the old ones and it looks nice. But I think the same thing he was doing was leveling any kind of inconsistencies. Same, same thing. Same <laughs> Just, uh, you know, you buried any here didn't talk to Harvard. Uh, they haven't, the guy is away. So he said, when I come back, I'll, and I said, listen, I did everything that I could. I plead, you know, and I said, internal elimination isn't happening. <laughs> and I said, two 64 square foot sockets. And I was thinking, Welcome I don't know what your <laughs> sense is, but if we take the 128 and they're able to do like, 80 something on the front and 40 something on the side. Uh, he drove attached to the rope here. up the expedition. The city will be written up as two sides totaling 128 square feet. Perfect. Perfect. That, that, what are you writing down? And that should win the day. We didn't talk about coffee. So we, we, said, we said 40. 40. Yeah, we remember. I think we can have up to 64, but yeah. we thought 40. Yeah. No, we'll, so that would be enough better than a two side totally 128. Perfect. Yeah, I think that's a big deal. Perfect. I think that'll get us over that hump. Knowing this guy. Good enough time. Just start filling out the next one. No. Well, like, like Mike Sorry, just said it. <laughs> oh, you can still answer that, you know. There's a lot of truth in that, and I, I, I'm just not that much of a rich risk taker, you know, his money, especially not. Yeah. No, I, I, I understand. Give me a, you want to turn your question. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, 
We did a sidewalk today. I don't know. You want to use my shoe? This place is a great fit. No, it's the one that's right in a fountain pen. It's right. It's a more expensive ink, right? That's it. Good. Good. That's yours. That's good. Thank you. Thank you. This thing says it went well today. With Concom and, and Bill Shaheen, the peer reviewer, walked around the site. They looked at because Johnny had got in touch with Janice, and I think Bill did as well. Um, they were thrilled about. They don't want to make it like a speed channel with that water, so they wanted to meander, oh, which yeah. is fine. But and we said, yeah, that's that's fine. But that siltation up under the road, there's like a little island that they're saying, sure you can scoop out, but then there's one that's all silted up. And the question was, is that purposefully silted to allow wildlife to pass? No, I don't know. What answer do you want? It <laughs> does, does, does not matter. It just, right, yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, uh, trying to read the crowd. Um, so we'll check. With, we have a meeting with DOT tomorrow. So we'll check with them. And then in that back area by the bike path, we they're going to allow us to go in and pull that stuff out to just clean it up. And then the rest of it seemed to go well. A couple comments here and there, but overall, well. What's a special team, Joe? What's a special team? You want me there? I'm signing that book. You can go. I think you're going to get a text. Oh, yeah. Mary, they don't have as much stuff as Rocky had, or are they just gonna have primarily tools? Uh, lots of tools. Uh, lots of tools and hardware? Um, Some hardware. Um, what, do you, what do you mean what do you mean by hardware? Well like the nuts and bolts? Yeah, that's they have they have a limited amount of that, but they have all <coughs> kinds of electrical tools, hand tools, drills, jacks, air compressors, the whole line of that kind of stuff. Who's this? Uh, hardware hardware hardware. rigging equipment. Uh, trailer, tire, trailer, stuff for like a, um, a tow, small, small hole, small tow behind trailers for like cars and pickups, yeah. and a lot of stuff to support that. You know, the jacks, the tongues, the, the hitches you could put on your vehicle to accommodate that, and tons and tons of different kind of uh, yeah. the part that goes into the, you know, your, on your car, you got like, or your, your truck, you got a square tube. Yeah. All those different. Uh, attachments, yeah. different drops. It, was, it was a while, you know, he was looking for an odd piece of hardware, an odd size nut or bolt or pin no, or something. Big, Rocky's not, always had it. They, they've got a few, um, but they're not big into the, I mean, they do have nuts and bolts, but I don't know, I don't want to say they have a big su su yeah. supply. Because that supplier is still there in, uh, right near the golf center there, wasn't there? Fastenal. A, yeah, was Fastenal not there anymore? No, they're in uh, Granby now. Oh, oh, they moved to Granby? Yeah. That was a good spot for the odd bolt or nut or something. Yeah. Oh, good quality. I mean, we get, we get, I'm not sure because uh, I think it's right on 116 there somewhere, but we, uh, we get stuff from them. And huh. We have it shipped, you know, yeah. over. Like Amazon. <laughs> when I, when I first bought 220 Russell Street there, they were kind of, remember? Yeah, yeah, they're kind of handy right there. Okay, I got 7.30. Um, this is uh, 
our second hearing tonight. And before I start the hearing, I'm going to let you know that uh, this meeting, uh, we because of a newspaper glitch, it wasn't advertised the second week in the newspaper. Um, we are in compliance with open meeting laws, but we're not in compliance with zoning law. And so we will conduct a hearing, we will take a vote, but we have to, I don't know, terms ratify it. Yeah, we'll have to reconvene to do an official vote after noticing it again. Yeah, so just so everybody knows that, okay? Perfect, thank you. All right, um, this is um, a uh, application of uh, Barry Roberts slash Harbor Freight. Um, requests uh, a variance to allow internally lit signage and a larger sign than allowed for a new business uh, for Harbor Freight Tools. Great. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, my name is Tom Reedy. I'm an attorney with Bacon Wilson over in Amherst here on behalf of Barry Roberts. 303 Russell Street is the entity that's going to be purchasing and developing the property at 303 Russell Street here in Hadley. Um, you may recall we were here a few months ago, had submitted an application in December for a finding because uh, the lot is zoned industrial, requires 250 feet. We only have 197 feet. Uh, you granted that finding, that special permit, um, to allow us to redevelop the site. If you've been by since, I think you'll see that there's been significant <laughs> amount, a significant amount of work done, buildings taken down, wood chips, trash, debris removed, some fill brought in and, and regraded, and that's really just the first step of this redevelopment. It's a, um, you know, as far as the assessed value is less than five hundred thousand dollars now, it's going to at least triple, if if not more, once it's all done. So we think it's not only going to be aesthetically pleasing for the town in that location on Route Nine, uh, it's going to help the environment by cleaning up some stuff that's in the ground currently, uh, and have some, um, you know, some appropriate environmental controls. Uh, but also help increase the, the tax base here in town. Uh, so what we're here um, to ask from you this evening is for a variance from your sign bylaw. Um, your sign bylaw allows uh, one, any number of signs that equal 64 square feet on a building and require external illumination. Our original application asked for internal illumination, but we are no longer looking for that internal illumination. Um, we are going to request uh, up to two signs not exceeding 128 square feet total, all to be externally illuminated. Um, and, you know, as, as reasons, therefore, I'll, I'll show you the, the site plan of what we've got. It really is a function of the shape of the lot and then the, the soil conditions of what we've got this is probably just a, a really simple way to look at it you've got route 9 here to the north you've got the bike trail to the south you've got that perennial stream over to the west and then steve lewis subaru is over here to the east uh, in order to get you know you have to fit a this is industrially zoned you have to be able to fit a pretty substantial size truck so you have to make sure that the turning radii works so we also because of the how tight the site is we have to pull the building back to pull the building back here a little further from the road um, and so that's one of the reasons why we're requesting two signs and, and a couple of planning board members are here and I think they can uh, speak to either their support or, or opposition, hopefully it's the former. Um, but we would be looking for a total of 128 square feet uh, for this building. This building is going to have a 40 square foot sign which completely complies with the bylaw externally illuminated, so nothing to do here. This freestanding sign will be complying with the bylaw, externally illuminated, uh, no more than 64 square feet. So it's really just this Harbor Freight building that we're talking about and to allow, you know, 64 square feet is allowed. What we're asking for is double that and then to be divided, you know, uh, maybe 80-40 or something like that um, for 64-64. Uh, there is that billboard here and what we've represented to the, the planning board is that there are nine years left on that billboard lease once that lease is up there won't be a billboard there anymore um, and so we think given the site its constraints the location on the <coughs> nine in an industrial zoning district if you take a look at the surrounding area that you can find your way to, to grant this variance without derogating from the purpose or intent of the bylaw uh, or being detrimental to public good and I think if you look at the purpose of your sign bylaw and 
uh, promoting traffic, you know, to make sure that uh, traffic safety is exalted, to make sure that uh, it, it looks aesthetically pleasing, um, and that there are some economic incentives as well. I think if you look at all those things in totality, uh, granting this variance uh, fits within all of those. Mm -hmm. So there's not going to be any internally illuminated No sites. internally okay. illuminated sites. No. All right. All externally illuminated. I'll show you maybe a picture. you have a picture of what the site is? I don't have a, I have one, yes, I do. I want to show you a color rendering of the site just so you can see what we're, the revegetation plan that we're talking about here as well. So that's what the, I'm sorry to get on top of your stuff here. This is what we're talking about just as far as beautifying the site, revegetating, you're going to have some landforms, some mounds which will serve to block the cars. Uh, there will be some natural grasses on top. You've got your freestanding sign there. And then all of this is all revegetation, wetland replication here and here, revegetation, um, mown grass, etc. And so we would be looking for the signs to be on the northerly face and the westerly face. Again, externally illuminated. Let me get <clears throat> something similar to that harbor freight mm -hmm. simple quality tools lowest prices red white and blue externally illuminated gooseneck down lighting uh, to be placed on on top and this would be the same for this and for the one over the doorway the entrance is over here yeah. pretty simple not necessarily offensive and you think it'll fit in and be externally illuminated so you don't yet know be some, what size the signs are going to be, even though there's two, not to exceed 128 total, but it could be 80, yeah. 86, 40, right, right. I could do a quicker math, right. I would tell I you know, exactly what it is, but, but, but yeah, 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 <laughs> some sort of, like a, maybe a two to one ratio or something similar to that. I would imagine that a larger sign would be here, you know, and I also, I wonder if, you know, with the variance of 128 square feet, assuming that in nine years when this billboard comes down, if there's a larger sign here and a smaller sign here, maybe we're back in front of the planning board requesting a modification to maybe have a, either a bigger sign here or uh, equal size signs here and here because there may be some other benefit to showing um, to the oncoming traffic. Is there, did you say there's gonna be a sign in the front here too? Yeah, there's a freestanding sign, f I think 15 feet high, 64 square feet total. And exterior illumination on the external yeah, externally illuminated, totally compliant with the, the zoning bylaw. I don't know if I've got one in here. I don't think I do. That sign has oh, that sign had both all the business the both business names yeah, on both, it? Be, oh. There you are. So something yeah. like that, Harbor Freight, and then just a simple Rayos mm -hmm. located in the back. And it's in a 75-25 ratio because that's about the way the site is divided overall. So I'm happy to answer any other specific questions you may have. Or there's there any questions? Planning board, this is this is something you guys negotiated. We we, we, we talked to uh, Mr. Roberts and Mr. Reedy when they were in Tuesday night, and first they wanted internal illumination, and like he says, you know, we went round and round with that about that they were they were going to put. You know the two bigger signs in the building, and then they happened to mention that the billboard in the nine years the billboard may disappear, or seven years the type of now sniping. But whatever, whatever the contract, we're not asking them to to uh, try to move the contract and throw it out. But when a contract is up on a billboard, that it could come down, and we specifically said if the <coughs> billboard comes down when the contract is up, the planning board will personally come here and speak in favor of. Two, at the time, it was 264 square foot signs, one in the front, one in the side. If the billboards are we're getting rid of a, that sign's got to be a thousand square feet. It's huge. And if that's gone, I mean, that's to, to, to basically replace it with a 10% sign or less than that is, mm -hmm. you know, I would have asked you, 1% sign. Mm -hmm. um, we thought it was a really good deal. Externally illuminated, we were adamant about that. And they agreed to it. And so that's why we're here because yes, we're in favor of that okay. of granting the variance. How, how does the billboard work with the um, in terms of the relation to the property for for like the planning board purposes? Well, they rented the property from uh, Keats. Right? All, all the billboards were put in prior to basically 1961 when the zoning went in, okay. and so they're all grandfathered. They 
I mean, I don't know how the procedure works, but it is, I mean, I'm assuming they pay rent. Well, I just meant, uh, for, in terms of like how the planning board views the site, when someone has a billboard on the site. It's a, it's it's a pre-existing grandfather pre -existing. use. This is the first time somebody's come in with a billboard on their site that we can do something about it. Okay. okay. All of the other ones, unfortunately, nobody's had to come in with anything that we that we were aware of. How many are there in town? Four. Four. You got well, you got one at the bridge. You got one in front of the big Y Plaza. You got one almost across the street. Yeah. And this one, so you yeah. have four. Although right. O'Connell's has one there too, right? Oh, that's one at the bridge. That, that's one at the bridge, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, well, the one at the bridge is the one by the new big bike gas right. station. And then as you go down further down Route 9, you got the big, the big, uh, so I the, the two, the two, two, two billboards double sided yeah. across the street from this mm -hmm. by uh, well, Salvation Army there. there. Yeah. And then this one. So. Is there any other question? I'm not positive, but I think the one of the bridge may be on state property, but I don't know about that. I'm like, oh, right, right next to the property. Right back there. Yeah, so. that's, that's, that'll be a, we'll have a chance probably at most of them, but that's one where the state's going to, you know, they, they like the rent because they don't have to do anything with it. Mm. What's the smallest size of a sign that they'd be wanting to put up like here? I mean, could, my concern would be that you'd max out 100 square feet on the front and just put a, you know, 28 on the side of the building or? I mean, they probably would love that. Yeah. Um, I think that we could, I mean, get away with. It is definitely two signs. E yes. Yeah, yeah. That, that's what, so I think that helps to limit how much you mm -hmm. could do because there's only going to, I think it would look aesthetically foolish if you had this little sign of only right. a few square feet. Um, you know, if you'd want to say no more than, 90 80 88 on the front i think the one you know i've seen one where they've got like 86.7 you know so like 87 on the front and then 63 on the side which is bigger than what we would allow in the aggregate but i think something like that if we said you know I, if i could get like an 88 square foot sign on the front and then the balance of the, you know, again, my math skills aren't there, the 38, 40 square feet <laughs> on the side, we could probably do that. Oh, that's not a bad, and then that limits it. Um, you know, then the only other piece would be, like I said, in 10 years or whatever, if the billboard comes down, if they wanted to spread that 128 over differently, maybe more equitably. Well, we could still do, I mean, we, could, we, could, we could do a maximum on the front of, of like 90, and then that would, Leave the door open to. Yep. What's take, the largest sign currently on Route Nine? Yeah. Do we know? The storefront sign on Route Nine currently. What's, What's the, the largest, largest sign on Route Nine yeah. currently? Oh, the stop and shop. That's why. Probably stop That's and shop. Right. Uh, Best uh, West, uh, <laughs> well, from a historical point of view, the biggest signs in town, probably before your time, was theirs. Who? Kmart. Wilco's. Steigers. Steigers. Okay. And every time people appeal for bigger and bigger signs, mm. it's not necessarily an indication that business is going to succeed because your sign is <laughs> well, big. Like, there are yeah. other indications and other economic forces at work. Probably the biggest sign right now might be the stop and shop. But that's massive, though. Yeah, that's the biggest one along the front of the building mm. there. I would guess. We've been, you know, we've, over the years we've been able to whittle others down in size and uh, you know Home Depot's still got pretty good stuff but they, mm -hmm. they were granted a variance for that one. Home Food has a big sign. Yeah. Yeah for those people that are concerned that the signs are not big enough twice the planning board has gone with bigger signs and uh, the town meeting. at the town meeting in order to change it. Mm -hmm. We didn't even get a majority both times. Mm -hmm. So it's, there is not a lot of sentiment in town for bigger and bigger signs. So what's your pleasure on? I think, I think a more targeted sign by law would be better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I, I, we talked about this before. We, 
that it's a town meeting question, but. Uh, uh, everybody has a personal opinion. Yeah. In other words, other. But they're based on the square, on the square and internally illuminated ones, and then so they're still drawing a box around, like like we had the Planet Fitness one come before here, and I don't know if you guys have seen it. I think that sign looks very nice in the in the Planet Fitness there, but. Well, there was some concerns about the internally illuminated. We couldn't yeah. reach an accord with, and uh, blinking. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. The only way to eliminate the blinking signs, would, they are a road hazard. You know, they change the the lettering, and that's not what actually the town meeting yeah. was pretty adamant. No, no, no. no. In, in, I mean, in this particular case, the, the I, I think this this is a unique enough property. The the situation there uh, uh, as it's situated against the road. For um, to to use the to have the signs on both sides and the fact that it has one of the uh, it can't be part of our variance you know, technically but uh, but it does have a sign at the road as well yeah two sided well so the sign at the road is legal That's oh I know that okay yeah um, so per, per the bylaw they could have the sign at the road and then they would be able to have it's just one sign or could they have two signs there, there, the bylaw reads one single sign at the road maximum 64 square feet on the building you can have up to four signs totaling a maximum of 64 square feet so you could have four what are we, 16 square foot signs or split them up however you want to get that 64 and that was done for a lot of the reasons because a lot of places you know we've got a corner lot you know i just don't i just i'm not trying to exceed 64 but I like to have you know visibility like like this one here and so then we changed this. That that's we changed that a few years ago to allow a number of signs, but still totaling. Like I just said, the 64. So you're seeking a variance for two signs at a total of 128. So s simply, an additional 64 square feet. An additional 64. That's really what it is. But to be else. to be perhaps divvied off of one and given to the other. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We're. I think what Mr. Maximowski was saying is we could have. As the zoning stands, up to four signs totaling 64. Mm -hmm. And what we're saying is, we'll take 128, please, and we'll divide them amongst the two. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And then also reduce this and just keep this at 40 square feet. So, I mean, if, in terms of looking at the property as a whole, they're not, they're not using the maximum signage on the back lot. Right. And they're going to be, as Jim said, the thousand square feet or so of the, of the billboard eventually which would further beautify the area as well yeah. so. well, I think it's reasonable also to say you know you're technically you can put signage on half the building and you know if you could increase the you know by 50 percent to 64 maximum allowable um, I mean talk in, in terms of square footage another 14 square feet is not that much when you're really in the grand scheme of things from 64 to 88 or 84 or what have you. All right. Do a motion to, um, to grant the variance um, for up to 128 square feet, neither sign to exceed 90 square feet. Mm -hmm. Second. External mobility. Oh, External mobility. Yeah. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you, Thank you guys for coming. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. I started the third sheet. Oh, you did already? Oh, good. <laughs> you did. Good. 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 Good.
Okay, uh, it's uh, 7.50, and uh, our next hearing is uh, application uh, Steve Lewis Subaru, 315 Russell Street, seeks a variance to use the property at 272 Russell Street. Um, property owner is To Your Health, Brunswick, Maine, for storage of new vehicles. They request the uh, Board of Appeals to favor the use uh, as an expansion of their class one license and to use and the use meets the requirements of the zoning section 5.9. Hey guys, thank you for having me. I'm Joe Clark, I'm the general manager at Steve Lewis Subaru. Uh, we've been working with the planning board on uh, approval for the lot and uh, as we uh, had last discovered the, the bylaw as far as the aquifer uh, system that was in place that allowed no more than five unregistered cars to be on the lot at one time. Um, in doing some research and, and talking to some folks that are familiar with the bylaw, uh, Bill Dwyer, for example, talked about the bylaw, how it was established as far as to limit uh, or eliminate, you know, junks piling up on these lots and or uh, limiting the number of used car dealers uh, to come about as well. And another one of the concerns as well was to have uh, older vehicles or junk vehicles that are leaking oil or transmission fluids into the ground. Uh, what we're asking for, for a variance, all the vehicles that have been on that lot and would be on this lot um, are all brand new inspected vehicles. Uh, these cars are all, you know, and, and each vehicle sits on that lot for our average turn time on a vehicle is between 30 and 45 days. Uh, so no one car to sit on the lot for any, any longer than 30 to 45 days as well. Uh, only new vehicles would be placed there. And these vehicles have all been inspected by mechanics to ensure that there's no leakage or whatnot, you know, as, as you would expect with a brand new vehicle. Inspected, not, not a sticker? Not, not a state inspection. No, uh, all vehicles when they arrive from Subaru, we, we have a pre-delivery uh, pre inspection that we must do for safety reasons. Mm -hmm. So all these vehicles are looked at by mechanics before, and then once they're inspected, we bring them down the street for, uh, for the additional storage that's needed for us. And how many uh, cars are you looking to store there? Uh, we're we're looking for no more than I, I believe sixty was the magic number that would work for us. Mm -hmm. uh, our numbers range anywhere from fifteen cars to sixty cars that we've had there. Right now, I believe I think we have about uh, thirty there at the moment. It's my understanding that you cannot and will not sell vehicles off that lot. That is correct. The yeah. only thing they'll be is is stored there. Yeah. The, the only, the only folks that are allowed, well, I shouldn't say allowed because it's public property as far as there's a restaurant there as well, but uh, our staff drives down, gets picks up the vehicle, brings it back to the customer who's waiting at the dealership to look at if there's a customer waiting for that specific vehicle. Basically what we do is kind of like at a grocery store where we're just fronting newer inventory. We, we, all the stuff that just comes in goes down the street. We try to move the stuff that's been a little bit older off of our lot and then we use that to replace the stock that's... Uh, the vehicles aren't separated from the common access of the road at all, so people can look at those vehicles, walk around them and stuff, they're not quarantined off? Um, we haven't experienced much of that. Uh, we don't encourage it, and we even we, we put signs in the cars that actually tell you to, you know, to refer back. To they're it. facing away from the road, too. Right? Yeah, that was a recommendation by the zoning board, actually by the planning board, because they didn't want it to look as though they were on display. Mm -hmm. So we, you know, they suggested putting them further to the back and then facing them away, so that way it's, it's kind of clear that it's... Uh, do the vehicles have window stickers? They do. Yep, these are all brand new vehicles. Yeah. Now, do you have a long-term uh, agreement with the old property owners at this point? We have a lease signed with them at the moment. It's a one-year lease, which with the intention of renewing. But uh, yeah. What does your lease state that how many vehicles can you store there max? Um, then I believe it's 80 on our lease, uh, but we're not looking for that much storage. But I believe when, at the time when we had written it, we just wanted to kind of make sure we had enough space. Mm -hmm. uh, they're okay with us using the entire site, but of course that would, you know, we don't have a need for that much space either, so. But we are renting that entire lot, but we just don't have the need for that much of the space. It's just for safety of our employees because there are traffic lights there and it's a very short distance to travel. It's an ideal location for us as far as keeping 
That lot is connected through to Lowe's though, right? It is. Traffic yep, yes. You, yep, we, we enter through the Lowe's through the side entrance. That way we can utilize the traffic light. Because it's hard taking it. Yeah, it's going down two to one there. Bob. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, crossing two lanes on the other side doesn't work out very well. So your lease dates, you think, no more than 80? I believe the lease dates 80. I apologize if I'm not copying that with me. Yeah. Um, you guys have had this. Yeah, right. we, 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 everything that he said is, is correct. And the planning board doesn't have a big deal with that. The one thing that we asked them is the aquifer recharge bylaw requires that if you store vehicles more than a couple, you need to be on a non-permeable surface. And we asked for a letter from an engineer that says, okay to store these vehicles on a surface because you're dealing with our, our, our aquifer. And the vehicle leaks a fluid is going to go on the ground and eventually will end up in our aquifer and that's our concern. Yeah. And we haven't got that letter yet. It's a lot of crushed rock right now, right? It's all like a TRG, TRG, yeah. TRG yeah. trap yeah. rock okay. stone, yeah. yeah. So if it leaks oil, it's going on the ground. Now, uh, you didn't have a uh, problem or with uh, like a fence around them or? Well, we, we haven't got to that point. We we're thinking of putting some kind of a barrier along Route 9 so that the cars aren't quite so visible. Mm -hmm. And But unless you're putting up a a arbor whitey head that's 20 feet tall, it's going to have to be, the car's going to have to be moved closer to the Route 9 so that they are a bit more divided and you can't see them because with the setting way back, if you, put a, if you put a hedge along Route 9, you're not going to do a whole yeah. lot. So we haven't got, we were waiting for this engineer's, engineer's report. report that said it's okay <coughs> not to blacktop mm -hmm. or not to put in a non permeable surface. And I don't, I think you're asking for a waiver from that? Yes, we're asking for a variance on the bylaw because they're saying trap rock gravel is not permeable, you know, as far as. Um, oh, it's oh, permeable. It I mean, I'm sorry, not, that's not the word. I'm, yes. It, it, it is, is yes, it is permeable. Yeah, yeah, yes. We're looking for yes. non permeable right. surface. No. We're asking for a variance for that because of the, we're not, and, we're and only putting new vehicles on that lot. The concern is, you know, nobody's going to guarantee a vehicle's not going to work. Yeah. I agree with most of what he said about a new vehicles inspected and everything else, but you know, you, you're, you're, you're talking of something that isn't, you know, a sign. Okay, big deal, we can do this, we can do this, but you're, you're talking to Right. And, and there's no plans in for the owner to put bituminous or nothing down like that? It, it, in it, terms it, of In terms of surface material and the driveway access or the parking lot that you're using, there's no discussion of blacktop in it or I at the moment no there is not that lot is is you know that you know they're they're leasing it to us and he has you know long-term plans of, of selling that property as well so as it stands now he's subject to the approval of the engineer is that the way it is now we, have, we, we requested some kind of an engineer that says it's okay to park the cars on the current lot without a problem I was going to put their name to that of an eventuality. And obviously, because there was some concern. Yep. Does it leak? Does it leak? In, in, in other words, the best way to do is to have an engineer verify that it will not interfere with the aquifer. So that's. Mm -hmm. Would a uh, periodic inspection suffice? Once it's down through by, by who and how? Uh, I, I'm just I know, throwing I, that I, out. I, don't know. I didn't think of that one, but I mean, you know, if, if, if you get a leak there, you know, the cars are parked there. Mm -hmm. So unless you move all the cars, how can you expect? Right. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm, 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 not, I'm not saying that's not a bad idea. I'm just making that as a quick comment. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, I don't disagree the chances are low. And then I've been with Steve Lewis Subaru nine years. If there is a leak, it'd be the first one. Never say never. Yeah, no, no, right. you can't say never, of course. Um, no. I guess that is a pretty, <clears throat> pretty big question. Yeah, you know, and. Well, um, that doesn't sound like an engineer is not going to say that if, if no. there's a leak, if there's a leak there, it's going to be a problem. If there's a possibility it will go wrong, an engineer won't stamp it in a way. Well, because it's, it's permeable ground, so. Yeah. But the, the question is a little bit more. Our, our brand new car is likely to be leaking. 
know, would help permeable right. the soil. I mean, they, you know, get an aquifer there too. I mean, you're but, you're talking about it's, like permeable, it's permeable soil though. So the in terms of getting an engineer to sign off on it, if there's a leak there, it's gonna it's gonna permeate the soil. So I. It, I don't see how an engineer would be able to write a report that would say other than that. We did yeah. have an engineer write a report that talking about the water runoff as far as the vehicles not affecting it anyway, okay. uh, which we did provide for the planning board. But as far as the, the leaks, like you said, I don't I don't believe there's an answer that can be given on that. But I understand, you know, my understanding of the of you know why that bylaw is in place is to you know prevent junks from, which would be more apt to leak. Mm -hmm. uh, Is there, um, I don't really know how it would be monitored, but any, if you're saying the average turnover on the lot is, um, is 30, 30 to 45 days, yeah. And it's it's actually, our current numbers are running under 30 days. They're, they're running in the 20s, but yeah. um, but historically, it's a 30 to 45 day turnaround. Is, is that where you accept deliveries to a vehicle? Or do they no. come into Steve Lewis They come first? into Steve Lewis first, yeah. Okay. So if there was a vehicle that was faulty from the manufacturer, and there was a leak. I mean, that is possible. You know, they, there has been things where there was a hose or something that's been disconnected. We it's we catch that before anything would ever happen. And again, and that is, I can you know I can count on one hand in, in ten years how many times we've had nine years too, how many times we've had that take place. But, so these if there was any leak or any issue with the car whatsoever, it it would be caught previous to um, heading over there. The lot was previously approved as a parking lot as well. Um, that, that was probably with bituminous, though. On the, I mean, that was probably with blacktop down, like. Um, it's probably more short-term parking. Right. Yeah. That's a specific good. intended location of the vehicles that have been previously approved. The planning board typically does not require bituminous. No. Not right. for, if, if we require a parking lot. It can be gravel. It can be even for parking lots. Yes, it's not. We don't say that you have to um, blacktop or bituminous. Mm -hmm. Most places do because it's easier to snowplow. Mm -hmm. it makes a lot less mess. Right. Um, some places you can put grass in. Well, like the other thing is, you know, most time you're talking a car that's going to be there for a couple hours. Right, right. And to say that you know we don't have leaks in a parking lot of any of the businesses around. I mean, you just drive Spots around, you can see. Sure. Yeah. You yeah. can see it. So uh, in the the actual variance is from the the, the aquifer. Aquifer use bylaw that says you could only park five, five uh, non-registered cars. Is that the actual? I think that's in generality for all property. You're not allowed to have stagnant unregistered vehicles on your property at all. Right. Yeah, that, that's. I a, have that's a, a copy of that. If you'd like me to. Is that is that what the actual is that the actual? Yeah, it's whenever more than five non-registered motor vehicles are present upon any one lot, they shall be stored on an impervious not containment area. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Which. Raises the sensitivity of the area too. It being it being an, an aquifer. Yeah. I bet you they'd like you to pay the for them. Then oh, they sure. I'm sure he would. <laughs> <laughs> like fifty grand to pay for the place. Yes. There. Yes. Yeah. Um, Question. Go ahead. Can you grant a variance? I don't know. The, I don't know the answer to this one. Can you grant a variance? With a time frame that expires. Yeah. I mean, we we could do that. I mean, basically, uh, and I guess the only caveat to that would be is that uh, the opportunity for renewal. them for renewal. Uh, you know, in other words, if we grant it for one year, uh, they come back uh, prior to the one year anniversary. And look for an either extension or another one year. But what I'm thinking here is, you know, they're good business. We don't want to shut them down and tell them they can't use it, and also put it such a hardship that you got a blacktop. But I'm thinking a little bit different. A one-year variance that with a time frame it expires. You know, pick a time next 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 May or something like that. So it's not in a June bad first. weather. At that time. You require an engineer to go out there and verify no leakage. If there's no leakage, grant no variance for another year. Mm -hmm. If there's leakage, all bets are off. Yeah. Well, it's basically <coughs> what what I said is you know periodic inspection. Yeah. 
but, but, but if you have it done by somebody that can verify that, in other words, per periodic inspection like us, like how do we do that? But to that point, like we just said, okay, move all the cars out of there, or maybe the next batch of cars, you put them different spot. in a different spot. No. The engineer comes in, one of our reviewing engineers, whichever one it may be, or an environmental engineer, whatever, mm -hmm. I don't know what you're with the appropriate party would be, inspect. Mm -hmm. they, can, they can certainly find out if it's hydrocarbons. That's a pretty easy test, actually. Keeping um, that close to you, it, it would be that, I, I isolated that close to Route 9? Well, what I'm saying, if a car is leaking, or yeah. a couple cars leak, you're going to find evidence of some sort. And they, they've actually got carbon, uh, hydrocarbon sniffer, just like when you're, I, I know this for a fact. I worked at a company that had a transformer leak. And I think it was Ty and Bond came in. And they actually have a sniffer that sniffed the soil as they were digging up the leaked oil around this transformer pad. And it's a very simple sift sniffer. I mean, it's not an extra, it's extravagant test. If, it's, if it smelled hydrocarbons, it beeped. Now, the real test was to actually take soil samples and go through the lab and everything else, but the carbon, the hydrocarbon sniffer would give you a basic test. It looks like you've got it off. Go a little bit deeper. Oh, no, we can smell hydrocarbons. You're definitely going to move some more out. Going to dig some, some more dirt out. So they could kind of, you know, you see a spot in the ground. Well, is that a water spot or is it something else? Okay? Or just a discoloration. I mean, you're going to have discoloration in the black, in the, the soil, the trap rock there. It's not like it's going to be all bluish green. It's going to it's going to look different, and you don't want to have somebody going out there and spending thousands of dollars on lab testing if you can simply test it with a sniffer. Yeah. Is that something that you would be agreeable to? Absolutely. Well, they get to, they get to park the cars there then. Yeah. 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 Sounds good. Yes, I mean, yeah. yes, I'll agree to you. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir, man. I'm another. <laughs> Um, yes. If if the aquifer were to get contaminated, what 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 is the chain of events that transpired then in that event? Like what happens in terms I, of? I would imagine it would take a massive leak to contaminate the aquifer. That much. Right. Okay. I, I would like to add the way these cars are are engine, the way these cars are built. If there was a leak, the way they're set up, the mo the most amount of fluid that can possibly come out is limited to a very small amount, uh, you know, so short of the oil pan, you know, completely emptying. Other than that, the amount that actually could come out, because of what's just what's in the lines, yeah. you know, is very, very, very minimal um, it, as a worst case scenario, you know, so. I mean, you, um, it would, to try to, I mean, I don't have a good answer for your question, but it would take a massive leak to contaminate the aquifer. It would not take a massive leak to detect something like that in the aquifer. How would, what would the correction be? Depending on what's found, it could be, would it be some kind of, it, it could be, you know. I'm just thinking in terms of impact to the town, like if an event like that, I mean. It, the, the, it, would, it would take a massive leak to do some damage, I agree. But the problem is, you know, one massive leak or a thousand small leaks, which one, you know, that's why you want to, that's the reason a bylaw is in there. Nothing is going into the soil at all from anything. Then we're doing what we can to ensure that it's, you know people are, 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 are treating the, the environment properly. That's all we're trying to do here. I know you say like the instance of leaks is rare, but I mean there is a measure that can be done. But it, I mean, it is a, a tremendous economic burden to make somebody have to blacktop a lot. I don't know if we can. I don't know if we can do a. Uh, I don't know if there's another way to reach this result, but I don't think we can do like a expi expiring variance. You don't think so? You can't set like a term to like subject to subject to soil review in twelve months or something like that. You can. We can put. We can. Typically, we can put conditions on special permits, but we can't put conditions on variances. Typically. Okay. So it's either you grant the variance or you don't. I, see, I thought from looking at this, I, I, thought, I originally thought the issue was more about using of a second piece of property for mm -hmm. support of the 
main piece of property. Mm -hmm. Not the aquifer impact, or the possibility of an yeah. aquifer impact. You know, the, the notice says, extension of the class one license and use meets the requirements of section 5.9. And the number of vehicles that you'd be able to put in there wouldn't exceed the total vehicles that are allowed for that commercial property in there in combination with what or, he's been allowed to park there? So what, if we get approved to utilize that lot, one, one thing that we've done is that with, the, with the amount of growth that our business has had since moving <coughs> to Hadley, um, we have a need to increase our, our class one license. And, but we need to have the approval of the lot for the extra storage mm -hmm. to get the increased number on the class one license as well. So, but you're... So for the, the where your say your lot B your your mm -hmm. overflow lot yeah how how many vehicles are permitted to be in that parking lot total how many There's spots a, are approved there, there isn't a limit on a number of vehicles there's a limit on a number of square foot and right. okay so it's not on the number of vehicles so as many vehicles you can pack in there you well, can pack in there so again the size of the building the size of the building two for one parking and they have far more than two for one parking based on a restaurant that's there right. they probably have. Uh, pick a number. So their allowance wouldn't exceed the permissible amount that he has already in there, in addition to? If his, his parking of cars is mm -hmm. exceeding the two-for-one parking of the restaurant that's there. It is. It is. Yes, it is. But that build, that site has also been permitted for a second building. I forgot what, the, when, when Lowe's was, when the, when the town meeting approved the uh, rezoning for Lowe's to extend it further back. There was a maximum square footage put on the low site of businesses, and there was a maximum square footage put on the original Seattle property. They used some of that for the restaurant, but there was still room on the, I'm going to call it the Seattle, where, where the restaurant is today yeah. for another building. I don't remember uh, by any means what those square footages are. It was in the a bank pad, I think, was yeah. 2,500 square feet or something like that. And a little, probably a little larger, but uh, it, it was a, a bank pad, so you remember that. Yeah, yeah. it was supposed to be a bank or another standalone yeah. building up yeah. closer mm -hmm. to the so, and, and when they, for whatever reason, when they put that, crossover between the restaurant property and the Lowe's property, they put a whole lot of that, uh, you know, parking area in. So the parking area that's there is far in excess of any, of any combination of building square footage that they need. Mm -hmm. But, you know, this, is it a big problem? You know, I, as, far, as far as the size of the parking area, I mean, it drains properly, drains it, every, everything is sheet draining into the ditch down there, mm -hmm. so it's not like it's, uh, that by itself is a problem, right? Um, but I understand that your, your question is, is mm -hmm. there is more parking available than required. Um, in, terms of, in terms of our purview <coughs> and giving him permission to use that as a storage site, um, even if we're not allowed to put conditions on that, is that something that the planning board would continue to have some type of authority over, um, and the and I the select board has authority over the extension of the. That, that's the a good. Board, that's, right? that's a good point. They are going for a special permit. They're going for special. They, we haven't approved it yet. They're waiting for this outcome. They're waiting for. Uh, they got a special permit use in the aquifer business business use in aquifer site plan approval. Um, that those two. So the, so the, the approval for the uh, use in the aquifer is coming from the. Conservation Commission? No, Planning Board. Oh, Planning Board. Planning okay. Board. So those are two So they're permits. in the process of going through the hearing. This is kind of continuing. This, this yeah. is, th that's a good point. The Planning Board could probably put that condition yeah. on. If you can't put onto the variance, mm -hmm. yeah. and you approve the other parts of it, then the Planning Board could put that condition on. I mean, really, as far as I'm concerned, as a member of this board, I don't have a problem with it as long as we can address that uh, particular issue. That, that's a good point. The planning board could put that condition so on you, the... You're suggesting granting the variance and then have an annual renewable approval from the planning board? Well, we could it. grant the variance subject to... Planning board's approval. Yeah, planning board's approval. I, I, I don't know that we could give you like a yeah. special permit that expires in a year, but we could give you a special permit requiring the annual inspections. Okay. And if you are leaking fluids, then you could get a cease and desist order. 
by the zoning enforcement officer. Okay, I'm just thinking quickly off the top of my sure. head. That's yeah. a good point. So, Thank certain you. time each year we submit the test results to the planning board. So whatever they that would be, that would that would be up to yes, yeah. that would go. Okay. To, yeah. I think that would be. I think that would be the. Uh, I think that's probably the cleanest outcome, just in terms of that we are sort of typically more in the business of looking at the uses and and whether we're saying that the use is okay, but in terms of actually hashing out the um, mechanics, the, the mechanics of it. of it, usually the planning board is usually doing that. The yeah, whole cycle that's a good point. Yeah, You're right. Yeah. Good idea. So, are we going to be issuing this variance without even testing the soil first? That'll be up to the planning board. Yeah, your, your, the, our, I, our vote would be subject to their approval. Okay. So we would be saying. And you're holding off until the engineering results come back. We're, we're holding up until either we get the engineering results. If they can't get the engineering results, and you but you grant this variance to park off site, then it'll come back to us. Well, you're actually you're almost, on, you're almost on every week. In case you come back to us for the report, <laughs> so it's a regular now. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, at least it's on the agenda to this, yeah. cover the basis. Um, so then, the next mm -hmm. available time that you come in, we could discuss this in the conditions that we just talked about. Yeah. Because everything else is I would say you no vote on your part, on their on their part, because we can put all the conditions on. But but they need the yes vote to park off site for the original property. That's what this is about. That's part of the license. There, there, there's, like, there's a few yeah. things there that's yeah. got to be done. Right. Yeah, because so. the, the parking off site is kind of a gray area. Mm. And so he's applied to do this just, just to cover, to make sure. Yeah. And all the conditions on that site would come from you guys. Correct. Correct. That sounds workable, huh? Put it into words then. <laughs> 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 yeah, what we were talking about. Yeah. All right. So the, with a motion to, to grant the variance for the um, for the use of the property as an as an auxiliary parking spot uh, storage area for the new vehicles uh, for the th for the three fifteen Russell Street address, uh, subject to the uh, planning board and select board approval at a later date. If Mr. Randall. May. Based on what you said before, you said this is either a yes or a no, right? So you're throwing a subject to in there. That's a good point. And I don't yeah. know. I don't. That doesn't sound right to me that you guys can do that. Well, and I right. may be wrong. Well, I, well, yeah. So yeah, I, I mean, I guess we, we're giving the variance, but the variance yeah. doesn't. So I guess we're just giving the variance. If I, I can't park cars here, the variance is is matter. a non-tax. So, right. so I guess we are giving the variance, allowing for the use of the property as a. Um, as a parking area, as a storage area for the for the new vehicles, that that would be the most. But the regulation would come. Number of vehicles. Because he still has to come back. You guys to come back. We're just yeah. we have, we have we're talking about the use, but they still don't have a permit to. Right. The permit. We, we, we have not granted any of the special permits required yet. Yeah. And your permit will dictate the number of vehicles that can be stored the, there. The planning board was concerned that the the use was improper as a secondary, as like a parking, as a use of a. I understand that, but at the same time, no more than five. Typically, so you can't use like another property for. Right. We, we, we and the Board of Selectmen will determine the maximum number of vehicles, uh -huh. the screening, and the, uh, the lack of editor address the impervious surface. Yeah. Okay. Happy Randy? I just didn't want you guys to yeah. do something I, that would get you. I thought about that. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. So, we'll do another motion. <laughs> so, we'll do, so, we'll do another motion that we grant the variance for the use of the property at 272 Russell Street. Um, at, for storage of new vehicles from the 315 Russell Street business, um, and that, and the finding that this use is an extension of the existing Class One license uh, in compliance with Section 5.9, which is what the request is. Thank you. Everything in there. Second. All those in favor. Aye. 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 Thank you, John. Joe, Jim, thank you. We'll be, you'll be back. I'm <laughs> <laughs> we'll getting a lot of TV time. There's another sign that's here around here. Oh, you guys are all superfluous. Is that it? You guys out of here? We don't need us now. No. We're not going to sign you're, again? You're, you're talking regular apartments and stuff now. Yeah, that was just for the last time that you were in town. Let's go ahead.
they're gonna they're gonna have a new sign up sheet for us. He's on the video record anyway. Yeah. I know, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> hey, uh, did you take care of my deal yet? Which deal? I got two deals going for you. 47 uh, or Cummins Road? 47. I haven't been to the planning board in a while, I've been busy on Tuesday nights, so I'm at the May meeting I'll be able to get stuff done. So, the answer, the short answer is no. Do you have a new? Do you have a sign-up sheet for this one, Jason? I'm just about to write it up for you. Okay. Which one is this one that we're doing? This one. This one. Um, we're doing the eight o'clock one. Eight, eight o'clock. Yeah, eight o'clock. I need to fill it out again, sorry. Yeah, it's for each individual hearing, so just another. You can sign it, but you didn't have to. That's okay. That's okay. Don't worry. Oh, so we don't have to do this one. No. Okay. You don't get paid extra for that. <laughs> seeks a finding to allow uh, under zoning section 5.17 to alter a non-conforming uh, use with additional parking and bedrooms. Randy, are you going to speak to this? I believe so, as, as well as I can. I'm not overly familiar with what's going on. I'll speak to the site plan and then um, I know that we have a Existing non conforming three family house at 148 Russell Street. Mr. Oslick is yeah. behind me in the back row. He can probably answer some questions for you that I will not have the answers to. So, how many bedrooms were there originally, Steve? Before we go any further, just let me, we've got, we've got two oh, yeah. uh, paid political announcements. Okay. Uh, one is that. Um, I have filed with the town a uh, notice or disclosure because I have a business relationship with him, and so that just so everybody's aware with aware of it. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, and then the other thing is, 
uh, all the hearings tonight uh, did not make the newspaper notice the second time as it was a glitch at the newspaper yeah so we are in compliance of the open meeting laws but we are not in compliance of the zoning law so which means is we are going to hear, have the hearing yeah. take a vote and then certify or ratify at our next meeting once it is advertised again okay uh, nothing should be affected in terms of the outcome but just so that you're aware of that okay. and I have to make that statement okay. so proceed okay so anyhow how many bedrooms were there originally when you and bought the house two two and one so, so five five. And five okay and you are my rooms was there uh, already so you, the, the exit you haven't changed anything other than converting a living room to a bedroom kind of situation is no. that right there was uh, no the living room is there everything is there there was extra rooms there kind of fancy dining room or fancy cafe room or whatever over uh, my plan is there is a Okay. I can give you guys. It never existed before. In a so you said there's five bedrooms. So it's safe to say that there's five people. Yes. So what? I just show you one more. Is first floor, three bedrooms. Mm -hmm. Second floor, three bedrooms. Third floor. Two. Well, I only see one here, Steve. Yes, sir. There's one back two, there. Two, yeah, back there. Where? Opposite me. One bedroom. And uh, two bedrooms here. Yeah, but this is a room, though, isn't it? Is that the bedroom? This is the bedroom? Some closet and everything. Well, you got a closet here. Yes. You got attic, attic. You got a bathroom. I have not yeah. been in the house, so I don't know. Yeah. Is this a bedroom? Oh, yeah, bedroom. This is bath is uh, out there. Right here. Closet is here. Closet's here. Yeah. yeah. All the way closet. Actually. But you've got an exit through the bedroom. Yes. I don't think you can have the exit through the through a bedroom. You have to have a egress. Yeah. Yeah. Separate means of egress, not out of the bedroom. Yeah. So I was that a window that was converted to a doorway? Is that what that was? I don't. I don't know. They did uh, egress, new egress for the building, nice and wood, big, huge mm -hmm. one. Was and that done they, before you owned yeah, the property? Yeah, they yeah. Done before me. <clears throat> um, so, so what? I guess what's he's asking well, to what's going increase. On? the number of bedrooms because we we have the, the pre-existing non-conforming as he said was five bedrooms okay okay so the existing was five and now he wants to go to eight if i'm reading this correctly the other egress from the other side and that's a hall enter a hall like that's a, a real yeah. Yeah. and the new egress well, yeah, that's the other two. two the other side but through the so, but can I can I take one minute with him out in the hall and come right back? Yeah. Sure, please. Yeah. So we so that's why that's we, not labeled as a bedroom because there's an egress going through it. Yeah. But so we yeah we can talk about when they get back in here. But, but we can we we can still we can thank you make a finding we can make a finding of the alteration of a non-conforming use. We can make that subject to conditions, including that the fire and building inspector have final sign up. Like that is not that's you know what I mean. We can yeah. say, and then we then because we don't know what that egress situation. We don't. That's not our purview. Yeah. I fully expected Mr. Nyhart to be here this evening because I know he had issue with this. So what I would want to talk to him about is. Tim said there's no way that this second bedroom was going to be allowed for the very reason you're talking. Yeah. Is it needs to be an egress that's not through a bedroom. So there's an egress here and there's an egress here. So we're going to ask for an additional two bedrooms for a total of seven, not eight. All is shown on these 
two planks. One here. This One is on the third. third floor. Yeah. Three on the second floor. Three on the first floor. Obviously, this is a prior to the 61. Is, right? I mean, technically, yeah. it's a bedroom that you have a closet and a door. Yeah. Well, I mean, well, the, by definition, it's a bedroom with a closet and a door. The, the only way so, you could you know, you do no this door. differently would be to make a, a hallway all the way out here and a real... Or just no door. <clears throat> but again, yeah. uh, that, I think that's beyond our... No, that's that's beyond, so that's why I think we, I think we're able to say that, I think we're able to say that we allow the, the extension of the pre-existing use and I think we keep, we keep it within the approval, of the, approval of the fire department and of, of the building inspector. Yeah. So, to answer your question, Mr. Kukoski, yes, it's, that house is built prior to 1961, but even if, if, even if it wasn't, it's been used as a three-family for long enough that it would qualify as non-conforming, and the town has it listed uh, in the assessor's office as a three-family house. So I know we don't allow those in this town. Today, we don't allow two families in this town, newly built multi-families in this town so they're called student stuffers <laughs> well I could discuss that with you as the single family homes that are truly student stuffers uh, but anyhow um, so now we're talking seven bedrooms mm -hmm. and the site plan shows the location of the building and there's a garage and proposed parking for a total of eight. eight spaces. Seven bedrooms, eight spaces. So that's... If he had the eight, it probably wouldn't because you have to have eight plus one, right? Yeah, I don't... I, this town has no parking requirements no. for residential that I am aware of. Well, one per person. I mean, that's... Uh, per bedroom, rather. But it's not, I don't believe that's in the bylaws anywhere, and I'm not arguing the point. I'm just making a statement that I don't believe we have any of that, and we should. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, one per bedroom makes sense, mm -hmm. since there's only going to be one person in the bedroom, and then you got one extra for a guest or whatever. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but I think the parking would only go to how detrimental the change in use is, really, because I don't think yeah. that, cause it's not... And, and really, it's not, the parking's not non-conforming. It's just about. I think it's just part of the overall kind of view of it. Right. But we're not making a finding at all on the parking. Well, you'd have to conform with the parking. Right. But there's no parking for it to conform with. Right. There's no. Yeah. Establishment. It would just be like whether we're we're looking at. So uh, so to find to make the finding right we it's a it's a it's a change to a pre-existing non-conforming structure. So we've, we're being asked to make a finding that the change is not substantially more detrimental than the existing non-conforming use to the neighborhood. So no. theoretically, if there was only two parking spaces there and then you said, now we're going to put eight bedrooms in there from up from two, then you'd be like, well, that's more detrimental. Now there's not going to be parking. People are going to be parking all over the place. So I, I just, to Randy's point, there's not, it's not a non-conforming parking situation. It's just part of sort of the evaluation of the, the whole situation going on in the property. And as far as the uh, legality of the bedrooms and the egress and everything, that's that's the fire department and I the building inspector. We leave that subject to the right. fire department and the building inspector. Mm -hmm. yeah. Only the third floor is issue. Yeah, you're. I think you're all set on the uh, on the other floors. Mm -hmm. that whatever he does, I'm sure the building inspector will be looking at it to make sure that it complies. If there are issues, then the uh, the, the building department will deal with it, and if you know, whatever comes of that, comes of it. Uh, another point is, I don't even remember who had told me this, someone told me this recently, that there uh, was a potential issue with people exiting through the back end of the, oh, to the main the, camp at our last meeting. To the senior center area? Yeah. There's a row of arbor vitaes along the back of the property. Is that correct or no? Mm, they have a road there. They use it all the time. There's a road to the town? Yeah. yeah. And then nobody... Is went. that... Is that uh, east or west of the garage on the back of the property? I think it's west of it, Jason. West of it. Uh, I, I, you can see it plain as day if you go over there, right. and I'm pretty sure it's on 
the west side of the garage. But this is the parking lot would be east, right? <coughs> yes. Yeah. So it's it's like in between I think the house so. and the garage. I think so. I'm not positive, but I I believe. And that's being used as like a pass through instead of pulling out on the road now. It appears that right. it is. I've never seen anybody use it, but there is definitely a marked path there or whatever. There's you want a to call change it. in that lot there that will probably change. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, especially without permission. Yeah, and yeah. it's it's one of those things where I don't. It's not. Uh, it doesn't make or break the use of the building. It's just somebody's idea of being okay. convenient. You know? yeah. So whether it's to avoid having to go out onto Route 9 or what, I don't know. Uh, but it's there's definitely something there. Uh, so we could, add, we, could add, uh, we could add a condition on sealing that up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Either continue the hedge or put a, yeah. some kind of bollard. Or yeah. like and that's that. something that was there prior to him purchasing right. the property. Oh, I remember. It's been there for years. Yeah. Um, yeah, if if you did make a contingent to either completing the hedge or putting some kind of obstruction or fence or something to prevent access. How to long have you owned that, Steve? It's six months or so. Mm -hmm. Oh, regretted. <laughs> so far. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's the one guy who's over there making my wife is really crazy, you know, <laughs> texting all the time. <laughs> Okay. Right, so so um, I'll make a motion that we uh, that we that we make the finding that the uh, proposed use uh, is no more non-conforming, uh, subject to the with fire. the seven with the seven uh, subject to fire and building approval and uh, subject to um, sealing up that back entrance, the back the back egress area of the parking lot into the senior center area. I make one parking lot there. Yeah. So I use it as a parking lot, extra parking lot. Then you can you know, I don't mind when they go in and out. Yeah. yeah, but no crossing out of there anymore. No, because yeah. I mean, I can put it in. A gate or something. Off and put the parking lot there. Yeah. It's uh, paved, uh, paved anyhow. Yeah, so. Is it, so. it's paved? It, I mean, it's not no, paved. It's, it's not, just, it's just trampled. It's hard, hard pack. Is it? Right, okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So uh, second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, folks. You, you might as well keep those for your file. Okay. Right. So that you know what's going on. All right. So you, you've got to re issue the, the announcement in the paper. Yeah. Yep. And then subject, your decision is fine, subject to anybody showing up saying, hey, well, you, know, you didn't let yeah. us know and we don't want this to happen. My guess is it's not going to be a problem since Somebody the letters got sent out Steve. to everybody. Yeah. So on May 9th, you will finalize your decision, yeah. and then there's the, as soon as you get the decision to the town clerk, then the 20-day appeal period starts running. Yeah. Correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right, guys. Thank you very much. You got a rubber band there, Randy? I do. I have two. I'll take one. I'm not greedy. All right. Thank you all. Have a good night. Yep. Thank, you. Thank you. Have a good night. Yeah. Okay. Down to our last task. Do we have to sign a new thing? <laughs> <laughs> do we? We never sign. I don't know. They want to sign. Do I they want to sign. Do I have to make another note? <laughs> I might as well. <laughs> Right, future owner, 40 West Street. Oh, you can put Thank mm -hmm. you. 
mention again? Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, you probably heard this spiel, but this is a... She probably didn't hear it. She's hearing impaired. Oh, okay. okay. But she can hear you guys right now. Okay. okay. Uh, the hearing, uh, we were allowed to have the hearing because of what the second week wasn't published in the newspaper. But uh, we conform to the open meeting laws but we do not conform to the uh, zoning law. So what we're gonna do is have the hearing, make a decision, and the decision will be final at our next meeting where we will take a, or a, a vote to certify that outcome. All right? Unless somebody were to come out and- Right, unless somebody was to, right. Yeah. Okay. All right, thank okay. you. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so this is uh, an application of Valerie Hood. Mm -hmm. Uh, um, let's see, the address here is 40 West Street. Yes. And uh, it's currently uh, used as a two family and would like to make it official since uh, um, it always has been, uh, but uh, never has been, I guess, in the town rules listed as a two family, right? Okay. And this is. Um, you, you know where that property is. That's uh, right next to the bike that Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or next to the old fire station. Yeah. Yep. Now, is the fire station part of that property now or not? It's right next to it. Yeah, but that, that you share a driveway there, is that it? Oh. Uh, no, I don't know. No, this one has own. its own. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It has its own. That's like a bookstore or something. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. So, uh, I don't see that there's a. We're just, this is a formality to... Uh, yeah, so uh, we, yeah, we have... Um, this would be a finding? It's a special permit. We have authority, uh, we're the special permit granting authority for the conversion of uh, pre-existing, or pre conversion of older houses to two families, because they're not allowed at, they're not allowed um, as of right. right. After 1961. Houses built before 1961, we have to give special permits to... to for, for two families, to convert them to two families. Um, it's been used as a two family for as long as I remember. Yeah. Um, any questions? No. no. Make a motion. A motion to grant a special permit for the conversion of the house. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. You're in business. <laughs> <laughs> the last one and the easiest in the pack. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank Congratulations. You <laughs> Thank you.